All right, so listen, guys, in today's interview, you're going to hear from another agent that I coach personally. He's going to walk you through how he was able to quit his full-time job, get into real estate, and in his first year, double the amount of money he was making at his full-time job in his first year year in real estate. He's going to break down his lead generation strategy, his lead conversion strategy, what he's doing right now that caused him to have eight active listings and generate a six-figure income in his first year in real estate. I hope you guys enjoy the show. So I've got Peter uh, from the Chicago market who he and I just got done working together one-on-one -on -one for the last couple of months. And so we're going to unpack how far he's come in such a short period of time. But Peter, appreciate you jumping on with us today. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here, Brandon. I'm excited to get talking and um, let's see where this goes. I love it. All right. So context, let's set this up for the audience. How long total have you been licensed? Sure. Got licensed in January, 2021. Got um, it. However, I, there's a little bit of a caveat there in terms of my motivation for getting licensed. Uh, it was purely at the time as a quote unquote side hustle, Right. I very much liked what I did as a full-time job. Uh, and I was kind of like, you know what? It wouldn't hurt to make a couple extra hundred bucks a month, right? Uh, you know, do like, be one of those agents that do like a couple deals, right? Um, so that's what I, why I originally got licensed. And then what kind of ended up happening is throughout 2021, my love for my full-time job, which was like in radio was up here, right? Like very high. And the real estate stuff, like I said, side hustle, very much so just kind of like, eh, whatever. You know, I don't really care much too much about it. And then as the year went on, it kind of went like this. Sure. Where by the end of the year, it totally flipped. I wanted nothing to do with my full-time job. And by then I had already figured out about your program. And I was like, I want this real estate thing to be more full-time, more serious. Let's see where I can take this. So I actually ended up putting in my two weeks this past January. So January, 2022, been full-time since exactly January 17th. And uh, it's been, I think, the best decision I've made for my career ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly uh, we'll, we'll unpack that. So really, this 2022 is your first full year in real estate. Maybe we'll do another episode. What got you to the point where you're like, I want to get out of radio, which you love for a while, and getting you into real estate full time. Actually, why don't we do that? Because the audience, if we don't, like, well, why would you just tell us? So, so give us just a quick uh, uh, high level overview there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it came down to two things. Um, sort of my love for radio and just the job, I didn't enjoy it as much, right? And that's sort of just sort of as the year went on my enjoyment from it became less and less. And then on the flip side, for the real estate stuff, I began enjoying it a whole lot more. And the thing with the radio that was the biggest issue for me is that, look, one, they don't make a ton of money, right? Radio hosts don't make a lot of money. But even more than that is that there's really no opportunity for growth. Um, you know, I'm one of those people that like, I need to be challenged in some way. I need to feel like I'm week in, week out getting better at something. I'm growing. I feel like I'm accumulating skills, knowledge, all this stuff, right? And that career path really, quite frankly, didn't present with enough opportunity, you know? Got it. And as a result, while I had a lot of excitement because the job truthfully was a lot of fun, very low stress, it didn't satisfy what I wanted out of a career. And so I decided, and it slowly was kind of pushing me away, right? Down on the flip side, as I mentioned with the real estate stuff, it has all of that, yeah. right? I'm hundred percent in charge of how, about, on how far I want to take this, right? Yeah. And so I love that. That's sort of, and you know, this is a reason why a lot of people get into it as well, but in particular compared to what I was doing, I was like, this is such a golden opportunity and I want to go ahead and do this sooner rather than later. Right? Yeah. Well, certainly. And you got a huge personality, right? Which probably brought you to radio that led you to being an entrepreneur, uh, an entrepreneur working for yourself in, in a sales capacity. It's serving you very well. Look, I love to talk, man. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm an extrovert, right? I'm uh, expressive, as you would call it, if you wanted to categorize the personality type. So to me, it's like, that made sense with the radio stuff, but it also makes a lot of sense with the, with the uh, real estate stuff. It sort of felt like I could even apply some of the skills I learned in radio to real estate, you know? And it, it kind of helped me in that way. But long story short, uh, I didn't expect myself to make that change throughout the year, but I definitely did. And I'm glad I did towards the end of it. But awesome. this program was a huge part of why that, why I had the confidence to sort of make that jump. Cause don't get me wrong. It was definitely scary. 
Yeah, no doubt. So let's kind of get into it. So you're, let's go back to 2021 for a second. Yeah. That first year, let's talk about um, how you were approaching your real estate business. And at that time, it was part time. But, but I want to give the audience a, a, a difference between where you're at today versus what you were doing uh, when you first got started. How did you think you were going to come into this business and generate new clients and generate new opportunities for yourself? Yeah, I love that you brought that up because I, from what I was told from other agents in the business, it was very much so just be patient, right? Just wait, you know, it'll eventually sort of be, grow and, and snowball and all this stuff. And you won't do any deals for like five years. And all of a sudden, all these deals will show up or something like that. Right. So I was yeah. like, okay, whatever. While I do this radio thing, maybe this real estate thing will sort of take off on its own. And so my approach to finding new business, well, the truth is I didn't really have one at all. And I had some presence on social media, right? I, I told my friends, of course, that I was an agent uh, and I got lucky. I had two deals that sort of fell in my lap, two friends that were just like, hey, Pete, I want to buy something, right? But total luck, absolutely no skill involved, no prospecting took place for in order for me to get that business. So if I had that same approach going into this year, I probably would have had also like a deal, deal or two, maybe even less, right? Yeah. And so- I knew quickly that that approach wasn't going to work, especially if I wanted to jump full time, which is what sort of initially set me out to look for other ways outside of what I was being told at my brokerage to generate business, right? And obviously, this is when I came across your videos, your content. I really like the approach. Uh, and since I've joined in, I've seen the results and it's been fantastic. So I, I am curious, you know, I, I, I re, and I've told you this before. Uh, I respect your views on things so much because I've had a front row seat to your journey. And so specifically, Peter, why is it that you feel as though people are giving new agents um, the advice to essentially wait around for business, post on social media, be present on social media, and then just sit there and wait, you know, versus going out there proactively and generating business on purpose, Um why do you think that is the advice? And, and why do you think so many agents buy into that? Well, that's a good question. And I actually think about this a lot. I'll answer the second part of that question first in terms of, I think a lot of agents buy into it because it's the easy route. There is uh, very little effort that that requires, right? To just sort of sit back, wait for, for business to come to you. And it really keeps people inside their comfort zone, right? Makes but sense. Yep. if you speak with any agent that has, you know, even if had remote success in the business, they're going to tell you, no, 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 you need to step outside your comfort zone in order to really make this work, in order to really make this scale. And so that's why I think agents, especially newer agents, are inclined to sort of have that mentality, that mindset going into it. But in terms of why in the industry uh, that sort of advice is being passed down still, it's really tough to say. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sure, maybe there are some agents that have made that work for them, but it's probably very difficult, right? And it won't work for everybody. And not everyone has the time to be able to sit around and make it work, right? That's it. That's it right yeah. there. It's not that I or, or try to tell people that it doesn't work. And we're talking, the it here you and I are talking about is like content marketing, building a brand, social right. media. I'm not advocating for it or against it, rather that it just takes a very long time for that strategy to work, which most new agents don't have the time that, that it takes. They end up going broke and going out of the business. So you're nailing it. I, I think that it is absolutely the path of least resistance. Uh, so it's very sexy to get people to do it, right? Hey, you could become famous, you know, start making content. I like, this is fun. Yeah. Videos and Canva and Instagram. This is really fun. It just doesn't result in business short-term, long-term. Uh, that's another, another story. So then well, let's put this into context. I mean, how, how many deals did you do in 2021? What was the production total for the year? Sure. 2021 was three total deals. Got it. Two on the buy side, one FISBO. <laughs> got it. <laughs> it the last few months that I got as a result of this program. Got it. Okay. Now, what I want to do now is let's talk about where your production is year to date 2022. And then we'll kind of start at the beginning of the year and how you got there. So where are you sitting production wise uh, year to date? Sure. Nine closed deals so far, two are buyers, seven are sellers, three currently under contract, eight on the market, and then two coming soon. So within the next week or two, they'll be here in the market, one tomorrow, actually. 
All right. So, so you've have nine clothes you have, and then your pipeline is completely full, right? You've got, walk me through that one more time. You got how many active? Uh, eight active, three under contract, and then two coming soon. Got it. All right. So, so you will end up, if you close out your pipeline, where does that, where is that going to put you by the end of the year? Not including the additional business that you're going to get in fourth quarter as well. Yeah. I mean, if all this closes, which to be honest, I'm not necessarily expecting it to. The, the goal is for it to close, of course. Sure. Uh, but there are some difficult conversations that need to be had. Um, of course. To get everything to close, right? And we could get into that at a later point. Um, I would like to be, the goal is 24 closings for the year. Yeah. I realize that still might be possible. Um, and I'm not discounting myself out from that. However, I would be happy to at least get to 16. Got it. And what kind of income would that represent in the Chicago market if you end up closing 16 units? Sure. Um, off the top of my head, I would likely be around just shy of six figures there. Got you know, it. I okay. Think it would come out, if I'm just basing it off of the previous business that I've done, which to be fair, I have some lower sales number or sure. me, um, average sales numbers. So I think I'd be landing around like 85 to 95, somewhere in there. Got it. And to put this into perspective, where does that rank you in terms of what you were doing at your full-time job in your, so let's just compare the two, right? Your first, this is your first year in real estate, really, right? Your first full yeah. year in real estate, you're going to be close. And I think, yeah, based on the pipeline, but let, let's call it 85 to 95 grand, your first year in business, which is phenomenal. What, what is that uh, in comparison to what you were earning at your full-time job? Uh, I'm smiling as you're, as you're saying this, because it, it'd be more than double. <laughs> double. Your first year. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. so I'm going to come back and unpack how you have more listings active on the market right now than most agents will take all year. We're going to get to all of that. Just looking ahead for a second, and then we'll come back. Now with your skills sure. and what you're able to do now and your mindset and your strategies and the tactics, what does 2023 look like? Have you started to think about those goals? or And if you haven't, what do you think uh, you will do production-wise in 2023? You know, it's it's super exciting and I'm glad you're bringing up the next year because the truth is that's been on my mind a lot, you know, and yeah. I'm really, really excited about it. And it really kind of comes down to, I think, how I'm viewing this business because I can be patient, you know, I can do that. I can, I can wait for it to grow. And I told myself, I was thinking about this the other day, I was like, even if I changed nothing, if I made no adjustments between what I did this year going into next year, that would still be a pretty decent year, right? 2023. And that's assuming that I made no improvements. But now, of course, my skills, my experience, my confidence, all that your, is- Your going pipeline? To my pipeline, yeah, that's a big one, right? Yeah. All that is going to get better. So here I am thinking, oh my God, like I'm already happy with how this year's turning out. I'm thrilled for what next year is going to look like, right? And then- I'm already thinking like, you know, three years ahead, five years ahead, like what that's going to look like in terms of just keeping this momentum, this prospecting train going and just seeing yep. it expand because I got a microcosm of it this year. Right. Because I started with no pipeline, no, no skills, nothing like in January 17th, like just was like, okay, let's blind faith. Let me just start dialing. And here I am, you know, eight, nine months later and my business looks completely different. So it's super exciting. And I can't help it, but think about the future quite a lot just because like the possibilities really are kind of endless. Yeah. I mean, here's the deal. I mean, the reality is if you don't do 36 deals, 40 deals, 45 deals next year, something is wrong. And it, it, for you, because we can see this in the early years of, of an agent's business, they can double their business year over year for the first three years. And so I'd be shocked if you don't get to 200 grand next year. And then you, and then you, you get to half a million dollars in the next three or four years, uh, That's which I know you and I have yeah. talked about. Yeah. So, so very cool now. All right, let's break down the business. Okay. So over the past couple of months, um, you and I have been working closer together than we were before, because when did you join our, our group coaching program? August, 2021. And then, okay. So August, 2021. Okay. Got it. Yeah. So, so just I was looking, still part-time. Part-time. Okay. So what have you, what are the biggest things, maybe two or three big takeaways that you've learned over the past couple of months working closer with me that have moved the needle in your business the most, would you say? 
Yeah. Okay. So the most, what I would put at the absolute top is, you know, there's a lot of ways to phrase this. I'm going to use doing the work, right? It's showing up every day. Um, here's what I will say. You know, I'm not the most experienced agent. I don't have the best sales skills, right? I don't have all this knowledge about the industry. That being said, I show up every single day. And since January 17th, when I went full time, every single day that I was supposed to be prospecting, I have. I never wanted to put up a zero, right? Love that. Even if I had a day where for some reason it was just things were pulling me away from the phone because for X number of reasons, I still made sure I was like, okay, let me get a half hour in. Let me get an hour in. Just let me make a few calls, right? And I think that's been the biggest needle mover in the business is that I never had a day where I was kind of like, you know what? I feel like last week I worked pretty hard. I'm going to relax with this one. Right. Then your momentum and your business and your pipeline, they waver, right? Yeah. And so, yeah. Plus, I didn't want to, I don't want to feel what it's like to not prospect on a day I'm supposed to prospect. That feeling, Brandon, and you know, you might be familiar with it. I know maybe other agents watching this probably are. That is the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. And I don't even want to bring myself close to feeling that way because that guilt really can just, oh man, it's awful. It'll eat you up. So that It'll motivates you up. to kind of just be like, just make the calls. Make put yeah. something up there, you know? So, so what you're saying on point number one, the biggest takeaway for you is that regardless of skills, if you put in the work, you will get results. Because what you're saying is, this year you're going to, I mean, I think you, you, uh, under, uh, I think you're going to end up better than you, than you think you will, but <laughs> call it what you just said was, Hey, my skills uh, are still growing every day, but uh, putting that aside, you're still going to generate a six figure income with where your skills are right this second, which is crazy, which is crazy. If you look time at time that I've exactly. done this, right. What other That's right. you know, career path really offers us. And to kind of hammer that point home even further there are agents that have so much more experience with me in this business that probably have better sales skills that, you know, have more knowledge, all of these things, yet they might not have as many active listings on the market. Right. right? And that to me just, I think really kind of just, you know, proves the point that showing up, doing the work is by far for anybody's business going to be the thing that ultimately moves the needle the most. Right. Yep. So much so that I almost get like imposter syndrome sometimes, right? Where I'm like, right. I sh like I'll wake up and be like, wait a second. You know, I feel like I'm cheating the system or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. All right, cool. So let's, let's number two, let's go to skill set. Maybe what is one skill that you have learned either over the phone or on the appointment, Peter, that you have found has really helped you to either set appointments, generate more leads or take more listings? Yeah, and- I'm going to go to our eight week one-on-one -on -one session because that was really another needle mover there regarding the skill set. Uh, I found that a lot of the times before that in the pretty much the first six months of this year, I was settling for a lead without really going deeper, digging deeper to uncover, uncover a, a appointment opportunity. And what I've really learned is that it's not the phone calls, but it's the appointments that are going to move the business more. Right. And so once I've rephrased and it's sort of restructured how I approach the phone calls, instead of being, let me just get a bunch of lead leads this day. Let me get some appointments today. That really kind of changed it. And a lot of these listings that I have right now, Brandon, they're a result of maybe the past month or two. That's right. Right. That's where it's the past month or two that I've seen snowball effect happen yep. versus the first six months where, you know, a couple opportunities here and there, but it never really kind of took off as much as it did recently. And that's because I made that switch into really focusing on the appointment and going for that as opposed to just settling for a lead. Yeah. Smart. And, and, and it's just a manifestation of your, your pipeline maturing into actual contracts that it takes about 60 to 90 days. And would you say that to any new agent that would watch this, that listen, it will take you 60 to 90 days of consistent daily prospecting without ever missing to your point for you to start to really reap the benefit of that work. hundred percent. I didn't get paid in March. I did not take a paycheck in the month of March. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, there has to be some blind faith and there has to be some patience with the process. Right. Yep. And 
that's hard. I mean, that's very difficult. It's a lot easier for me to now to be like, okay, you know, it's Tuesday morning. Let me go make my phone calls when I've had business and I've proven to myself that it works. Yeah. Very difficult to make that, make those same phone calls when you haven't had yet that success. And that's where I think a lot of people will be weeded out. But if you just have that blind faith and you show up and make the calls, you're going to be just fine. Yep. First 90 days, it's, it's uh, it makes it or breaks it for agents. All right. So current business, walk us through um, your lead generation model. What lead sources, Peter, are you working now? I've loved Fizbo's lately. Um, and Wow, really? I, was, I didn't think you were going to say that. I love to hear that. Tell me more. You know, it, it's funny. Uh, my first two listings were Fizbo's. Uh, they were often doing these preview appointments, right? Where, sure. you know, my skills weren't quite there yet. I just wanted to get in front of the face of these sellers. They kind of fell in my lap. I'll be honest, I got a little lucky. And then the first half of the year, I was really focused on the expired cancels. Yes. Uh, mainly yep. because Fizbo's were actually selling in the first few months right. of the year. So, right. So spent a lot of time with those. Love those. They treated me very well. They definitely, those I find that have a uh, longer, maybe, uh, you know, pipeline maturity time frame than Fizbo's do. And so those really kind of started coming together for me in April, May, June, even though I was working, you know, January, February, March. But then once I figured out what I mentioned with you after the one-on-ones about setting the appointment, sharpening my follow-up system up and just providing constant value to for sale by owners, especially now that the market has slowed, those have been like incredible. I love them. I like check the Zillow app every couple of minutes. There's new ones that have come up for me to call right before this conversation. I just hopped off making a few of those calls. Um, Those have treated me very well as late. And so I'm excited because more of those will probably be coming up. Less of them will be selling on their own. And now that my skills are better, I really think that this will kind of snowball for me more on the FISBO side. So FISBO's first off market. So canceled, expired second. Um, and then I've had a few hits with absentees as well, although those don't get nearly as many, as much attention from me as the Fizbos and canceled do. Absolutely. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. And it, it's, it's, uh, it's not good or bad to hear you say that I thought, cause you have always done so well with, with canceled and expireds. Uh, but as you get more and more Fizbo opportunities to your point, and as your skills grow, Fizbos are always my favorite as well, because if yeah. you have good skills, there's no easier lead to convert than a for sale by owner. I think that's why, you know, I had those first few months of the year where I was like, oh, I don't know if I love Fizbo's. They're kind of right. hard. I would actually kind of avoid them a little bit. Yes. And I think because I've grown my skills, my confidence and my general approach to them. Now they're kind of like, oh man, you know, these are the, you know, foundation of my business at the moment. So, yeah, cool. So we got your lead sources. So break down, like, what does an average day look like? What is the daily schedule, including how many conversations you're having per day? Yeah. Daily schedule. I mean, I follow the exact system that you sort of preach, right. To really kind of break up the days into quarters. So from seven 30 to 8 AM, I hop on a role play uh, with, with Nate, who, you know, very well as well, uh, who's been fantastic and just a great sort of partner to kind of, um, you know, kind of push me. And so we always do our skills training then. And then from eight to 10, it's really sort of uninterrupted new, uh, new conversations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hit the Fizbos, hit the new cancel expireds, you know, hit the ones that didn't answer from the day before the week before the month before whatever. And I sort of have my own system of running through that. Right. And that's eight to 10. You can't, you can't interrupt me because that's what I'm doing. Right. 10 to noon. It depends. If it's a Monday, that's going to be follow-up, right? That's money-making Monday. Um, Otherwise, if I don't have a ton of follow-up to do that day, I'll actually probably just continue making a few more phone calls for new new lead generation. Around noon, I like to take some sort of a break. And that's when I kind of revisit the current deals, especially now where, you know, eight listings on on the market, I do get sometimes flooded with these calls and these emails and texts where I have to dedicate time to at least answer those, right? Um, Send, you know, seller feedback sheets out, uh, update, you know, my clients, things like that. All the servicing stuff. Yeah, the servicing stuff. uh, That'll typically happen in the early more parts of the uh, afternoon. And then appointments, depending on if I have some scheduled or not, will happen the rest of that day. So anywhere from like 2 p.m. on. Like today, I've got one at five, for example, right? Got it. And are you working with buyers at all at this point? Oof, I, uh, 
yes, but I'm not actively seeking them out. And only if they're really serious about actually purchasing, yeah. will I find that it's worth the time. Um, so yes, I currently have one buyer under contract, but she was ready to go. We just kind of had to find her the right place. You know, I would or, say. Or, or, or a seller that becomes a buyer is the best buyers for us. Yes. Most of my cases when people moving out of state. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Illinois. But, yeah. you know, it, there are some cases where I'm like, okay, you know what? Yes, it's a buyer. I will. I do find value in working with this person. You know, I do find that yep. won't be a complete waste of time, but I'll be honest, there has been several where I have sort of referred them out to other agents in my brokerage just because I know that they're just going to run me around. It's going to pull me away from making my calls and working with sellers. Got it. Yeah. Love it. And to, uh, to, to clarify, I mean, you're doing all this production. You have eight, eight actives, 300 contract, uh, uh, a lot of this, a, a, a good listing inventory with no admin. No. Correct. No admin. <laughs> no, nobody helping. Because because that's what people are thinking. Like, oh, he must have a team, or he must. No, he's doing all of this on his own right now. Because we're working towards the consistency. Then we're going to go hire the assistant uh, at, at a later point. Correct. Yes, hundred percent. And don't get me wrong; it's not perfect. Um, yeah. And over the last few weeks, I've actually found myself really kind of dedicating more time to having a more structured sort of servicing system. Exactly right. right. And that's where I'm at in my business right now, where I, I really want to nail that customer service aspect of it because I want the referrals when, when these that's close, right. right? And I want them to have that sort of world-class experience to my clients. And so that's kind of where I'm at in the business right now. And that's sort of my next sort of hurdle to overcome is really making sure that once I have a lot of active business, that nothing, you know, sort of no balls get dropped. Well, the next phase is now dialing in the afternoon schedule, like you've dialed in the morning schedule. So you've got your mornings dialed in with lead generation, lead conversion. Now the afternoons are for servicing the business. And you're really trying to dial that side of the business in, which is great. So one, let's just say, let's just say you could go back, Peter, get licensed all over again. And you found yourself coming out of that testing center, wherever you took that in some building in Chicago, you came out and you're excited. You passed your exam. And you ran into the Peter of today. What is the advice Peter of today going to give that Peter almost two years ago that you think other new agents would benefit from? Uh, first of all, sign up for a listing agent academy. <laughs> well, thanks for that. Yeah, you're not paying me, you know, just to make that clear. Um, I would say the advice would be a, a perception shift, right? Mm. I would really try to not even necessarily like, hey, you need to make calls or, you know, hey, this is how you need to structure your day. All that stuff is very important. And yes, that stuff needs to happen. But changing the perspective of, because when I went into the business, like we said earlier this interview, I was like, okay, I'm going to sit around and wait, post a couple of times on Facebook, yeah. um, make all these millions, right? And I think a lot of agents probably go into the business with that kind of mentality, right? That kind of mindset. Yeah. And I don't blame them. I was in the same, same boat. Yeah. I would say, from day one, I wish somebody had told me, hey, that's actually not how the business works. That you're more in control than you think about the business that you do. And then eventually like, okay, here's the roadmap to that. Right? Yeah, I wish I knew a year before I did what it takes to like really scale this thing. Yeah, and I agree with you, man. I, I just feel like we have to do such a better job setting expectations for people getting their license, getting into the business around what this business is and what this business is not. Right. And I think the more clear we can be, I think what would result is a lot less people would get into the business, quite frankly. Like, yeah. like honestly, don't, and we don't need to un, go down a rabbit hole there, but I think about that all the time. Like if, re, if people, the hundreds of thousands of people that get licensed every year, Peter, I believe if they knew what real estate was actually like, the vast majority of them would never go through the process of getting licensed no. because they don't know it's direct outbound sales. They don't know how hard it is. They think it's so glamorous. And they get in, they don't understand how hard this business is. Would you agree I with and that? I a hundred percent agree with that. Some of them, I would even, from what I've heard, just conversations don't even necessarily think of them as being in sales, which blows my mind. I know. Right? <laughs> it's kind of like, okay, something's not connecting here, right? Yeah. Like this is a sales business. You have to accept that. I know. know, Funny, funny sort of side note here. I took a, I went out to get a quick beer with a buddy of mine who's a client, um, good friend from college and he works at Salesforce. 
So, you know, big tech company, yeah. you know, he, he works as a salesperson there. We talked about what our day-to-day look like. It's exactly the same thing. That's right. They start their day with new outbound prospecting. They do their follow-up. They have their meetings. They service the crap out of their clients. None of that changes. And that really kind of <laughs> proved to me like, okay, sales is just the same thing, regardless of the industry. For us, you know, we have our own process to it, but it's still a sales job. Great, great story, Peter. And yeah. you you nailed it. And I've had the benefit of, of uh, being in three industries in my career. And you are exactly right. The industry makes no difference. And some reason, people think real estate is like different. It's like, no, it's just a regular sales job. The same thing is going to work at Salesforce, being you know in insurance sales, uh, being in, in medical device sales. It is all the exact same process. And I think the quicker people can accept that, uh, the, the faster they can succeed in this industry. So listen, dude, um, really appreciate it. You've given a ton, a ton of takeaways. Want to thank you for jumping on the show today. And uh, I am looking forward to being part of the journey as we move forward. Thank you, Brandon. I appreciate all you've done for me. I appreciate you having me on here as well. You got it. I'll talk to you soon, Peter. Thanks, man.